Hi, everybody, and Happy New Year. This is Jennifer Mulholland and Jeff Shuck. We are so grateful you're tuning in to our podcast, Plenty for Everyone. It has already been a quite a start to a new year <laughs> as we're all looking forward to um, a fresh shift. So much has happened in the first week. So we are coming to you today on Friday. Uh, January 8th in the morning, I'm calling to you from beautiful Park City, Utah and Heart Space, our retreat center. And Jeff is calling in from Michigan City, Indiana. Jeff, would you like uh, to uh, kick us off here? Yeah, I think, well, first we want to say thanks for listening and thanks for all your support. Uh, we are, we're thrilled to be in season two of our podcast. And you know, back in March or April of 2020, when we said, well, I guess we finally have time to do the podcast. I don't think we imagined that we'd have over 20 episodes and incredible guests and thousands of people like you listening and giving us incredible comments and thoughts. So just thank you for being part of the community. Um, and as Jen said, to start season two, we have, a, you know, we got a lot of material here to talk about everything from the insurrection in the Capitol to feelings of hope for the new year to getting an update, hopefully, uh, Jen on Riley and how he's doing and a whole lot of things. So I think for this first episode, we're just going to kind of take stock of the first eight days. It's, it's Friday, January 8th as we're recording this. We're probably dropping it next Tuesday, which I can't think of the date in my head. So... Um, you know, we'll be fairly timely, I think, with the things that we talk about today and wanted to start by just saying, you know, how do we find ourselves at the beginning of the year? What, what a week already. What a week. I'm feeling worked. I will just yeah. own. I think the roller coaster has continued the highs and the lows um, and allowing that to be. Um, I think maybe I'll start with it's it's so interesting as you ask that question of how I'm feeling today. I'm so grateful it's Friday. I'm grateful that we deliberately choose to take free Fridays for our own well-being, um, shutting down at noon in our respective time zones. And I'm thankful for that choice to give space because I feel like today I really need it personally. Um, my daughter, as you know, Hadley. Um, asked me the other night, she came home from school saying that she had been asked to choose one word for 2021 as her intention. And it, it warmed my heart that that was the conversation um, that she was bringing home. Her word was strong, that she wanted to be strong for her brother, Riley, um, that she wanted to be strong for herself in sports. And it was really interesting to hear her reflect on that and ask me what my word was. And it, I had so many words coming into my mind when I paused and said, you know, I, I need some time and space to think about what is really true for me. She looked at me and she said, healing. And instantly I said, yes, you're right, healing. And I think just starting off the podcast, like that's my intention, not only for myself, but for our country, for each other, um, mm -hmm. for my son who is uh, recovering from an accident and an injury, um, for my dad and my stepmom who are currently um, battling with COVID, for all the people that are suffering, including myself that is trying to find healing in my physical body in my mental state, in my spiritual connection, um, and in my role in the world um, to be a healing force. So that is my hope as the theme that despite the unraveling, despite the unrest, despite the insurrection, that we can reach deeper within ourselves to find healing for mm -hmm. um, each other and feeling healing for what feels out of place what feels um, out of balance, what feels off. And um, that's kind of where I'm at today. How, how are you feeling? And if you were to summarize where you are today on this Friday, the first week of January of the new year, where are you at? Well, 
Well, I loved all of that. And I loved the idea of just feeling, feeling worked. I think I feel, um, as you're talking, I think the theme that comes to mind and, and, you know, everybody who's listened to this before knows that Jen and I always come in kind of, we come in hot because we've already been talking beforehand and saying, what should we talk about today? And then, you know, we're a half hour into it and finally stop and say, shit, hit record. Um, see, I'm the first one to swear this year. We can. I we can held blame, it back earlier. <laughs> we can blame me for the explicit tag on this, on this episode. Um, you know, one thing that strikes me is the the kind of the the real versus the surreal. And if everyone will indulge me for a second to review some curriculum that that if you've listened to the podcast before, we've talked a lot about, but. You know, plenty, we kind of do two things, what we call conscious leadership and what we call conscious strategy. And we do a lot of different kind of activities, but there's um, two core retreats that we hold. One is called Lantern, which is for individual leaders. And one is called Meridian, which is to help teams create conscious strategy. And in, in both of those things, we talk about what we need to do as, as leaders and hope helpers is kind of, it's sometimes a dance that's hard to navigate because we have to hold in our, in our hearts and minds, what we call possibility, you know, a vision of a better world. But we also have to be willing to see things as they are right now and be willing to drop the story and just look at what is happening. And I think, so that was a long segue to answer your question. You know, so many times I've heard reporters, commentators, writers, friends, um, blog posters use the word surreal, how surreal it was to, you know, to watch the ball drop in Times Square and no one was there, how surreal it was to celebrate, you know, Christmas with no relatives, how very surreal it was to watch, you know, um, white male Americans um, mount a coup in the Capitol just two days ago. And I think I'm compelled to drop the word surreal and, you know, engage myself and engage the people around me to say, that is real. It's not surreal. That is real right now. That is the world in 2021. That doesn't mean it's the world we have to keep. Right. And that's where possibility comes in. But I feel like for me, the last you know two weeks have been a dramatic um, challenge to how willing am I to see the world as it is. And that doesn't mean being cynical. I think in, in our worldview, that's the first step to being a light worker, you know, to being an idealist, but to acknowledging that what we're seeing it isn't warped. It's not a movie. It's like, this is your world right now. Um, and, and I, I, it's not an easy, it's not easy for me, Jen, like we we were talking beforehand, you know, I want to be a bridge builder and an idealist and I am an idealist and a bridge builder, but I think having to drop my own story and my, my wanting to make things to always make it like, well, this is a new chapter of something better. It's a new chapter it's on us to decide if the narrative is better, I think. So that's stop there. But that, you know, real over surreal is how I'd kind of answer how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, well, that takes me to another, you know, point that we often try and practice and share with our clients is what it means to be a conscious leader. And you and I have been in dialogue about this. Like, how do we define conscious leader if what we do at Plenty is helping conscious leaders make a difference in the world. And that really is at our core heart of how we're here to help. But it begs the question what it means to be conscious. And what you're speaking to is one of the elements of how we define it. We're not, I'm not going to go into all, all of them right now, but we talk about you know, being present, being aware, and being connected to yourself and to the larger field, the larger other, the group consciousness that we're all part of. But what you're speaking to is this idea of presence, of literally being fully here in the moment to see what is. And it's a practice. It's hard to not want to check out. 
you know, I've drank every single night this week. Like that was not my intention, but literally I found myself wanting to decompress and reaching for a tool that would help in some way, create some stability when I felt really shaken. And whether that's good or bad is irrelevant, but noticing, you know, what do I need to do to really drop in to the moment and seeing with truth, seeing with um, wakefulness of what's going on. And it's almost like puzzle pieces. As consciousness is not linear. It's not fixed. It's energy. It's ever moving. It's ever part of. It's intricate. It's it's interoperable. It's part of an ecosystem. It's never isolated. It is part of a living field, um, kind of like the microbiome, as Zach Bush talks about in the soil. It's a life force, and it it comes from many different elements. It's not singular. And so when we look at consciousness in that way, when we talk about seeing what is, it means like bringing in a lot of different viewpoints, a lot of different perspectives, seeing things from the left, from the right, and making sense of it. And our brains want to sort it. And we want to like label it and judge it, figure it out, and then explain it away. And I think this is a time where there's so much nuance to what we're seeing, Mm -hmm. um, what is really true. And truth is always in the eye of the beholder, you know, because it comes from our, our viewpoint. It comes from what we see. It comes from a belief system. And that is true to the beholder. It may look different from another point of view because that belief system, that viewpoint has changed. And so, I think trying to make sense of when we drop into being present and not escaping in storytelling and not looking at the past and the historical context, but really looking about what are we seeing right now? What is happening? What is being exposed? What is coming to the surface? And allowing that to be part of our digestion, if you will, so that we can find what makes sense for our truth individually to make it better, I think is a question that, um, you know, we wrestle with. And that's a a kind of an obligation of a leader is being consciously aware that there are many different perspectives. So how do you take it all, bring it all together and do something good with it rather than do something that's so harmful and destructive um, and righteously, arrogantly, you know, uh, um, distasteful and harmful, I think is kind of where my head's at today of trying to make sense of seeing what is being super present, watching how I check out and, um, being committed to seeing more. Yeah. And I think, I think one thing, for those of you listening, you can count on from us over the next, pr- probably at least over the first few episodes in January, is just kind of reviewing that idea of consciousness and presence is is step one, and and it's a great it's a great place to start. And since you went there, Jen, I'd, I'd go further and say one of the tools that I think can be helpful, and you know, we always want to be cautious with tools because we want to remember we have we have we are the power, not the tool, right? And um, there's an old saying yeah, that. Right. There's an old saying, if, if you're holding a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So, you know, it's, it's not, it's not always about the tool that said one tool that I've been thinking a lot about this week in, in terms of helping me be present to what's happening in the world around me is, um, something called Occam's razor. And most people are probably familiar with it. It's just, it's just a rule of thumb that goes like this, you know, when you're presented with two explanations for something, the simplest one is probably correct. And I thought about that a lot because even by late Wednesday, I was reading posts from people I know who are well-educated saying, well, what happened at the Capitol wasn't far-right extremists and Trump supporters 
they were infiltrated and there's been a vast conspiracy by the media working with Russian operatives. And it's why all the hotel rooms were closed and there was no security. And this was a left wing plot by Antifa to deliberately make the Trump supporters look bad. So that's one explanation. It's quite complex. I would say it's plausible. As Jen said, truth, we all decide our truth. So I, I, yeah, I have to grant that that's, you know, possible. Or the other explanation is what I witnessed with my own eyes, which is the president of the United States held a pep rally for people who've been planning for two months online to storm the Capitol and said, let's walk down the street and, and, and walk into the Capitol. So which is likely correct for you, right? The one that like, and I think to pull back from the content, it's a helpful tool for your own character, whether you're leading yourself, a team, whether or not you even identify with the idea of leadership. Like when you find yourself doing a lot of backbends emotionally or mentally, it might be time to say like, is this serving me? Or is there a shorter path to where I'm going? Um, and, and I think for me, it's been helpful and, and, and not even about the current events and the politics and the rise of white supremacy and all the things that we need to deal with. I just mean in my own emotional state, like of feeling anxious or feeling insecure or feeling, and it's been helpful for me to say, well, the simplest path is, or the quickest path is probably the correct path for me. Um, so more to say there, Jen, but I'd love yeah. to kick it back to you. You're nodding and what do yeah, you think about no, it? I love that. I, I love that um, approach. And I think to, to explore it deep, deeper is oftentimes simple comes to us with space. It comes to us with presence. This is the power of presence being our superpower. So the, the opposite of the simple truth the simple wisdom, accessing that for each one of us um, is story. Yeah. When we find we have to justify, make up, there's a story around that helps us believe or calm or justify um, or, or withhold, I would just or withhold or whatever it is. Like when, whenever we're finding that we're actually telling a story about something to justify a behavior, we're off. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the insight, the simple wisdom is going to come through in that moment. It doesn't. For me, it doesn't work that way. But the, the simple wisdom that we all have access to, it is our true nature that we are completely tuned in to our unique truth. And it, it doesn't happen often when we are in storytelling mode, when we are taking our past and bringing it forward to the future. It typically happens with space. It happens when we're not thinking about it. It happens when we're in nature. It happens when we're quiet. And all of a sudden, that simple truth comes forth. And I think we all, there's an opportunity here to not only see what is, without justification, without storytelling, but really tune in to what's, what is our truth around the insurrection? What is around the, our truth around, you know, the systems falling apart? What is possible to reconstruct? What does United States of America mean in its identity? Like, who are we now? Who do we want to be? going forward. These are deep questions that we each have to answer. We each have a, an invitation to answer because we're part of the solution. And I guess I'll give an example without talking in circles. I, you know, related to Riley's healing, um, real briefly, we got information from one perspective of a New York specialist of a nerve doctor who said, we have two months to basically do whatever we can to support Riley's innate ability to heal for his nerve to wake up on its own. And if we find that there's no 
activity and no measured improvement, we're going to have to intercede with a nerve transfer and a tendon transfer, which is a really big surgery. And at that point, should we choose to go down that path? Now we're saying we're intervening to the process. And the reason being is if we wait too long, the nerve will no longer send impulses to his muscle, his muscle will turn into tissue and it will die. And he will not be able to uh, flex his foot on his own down the road, which he cannot do now because the nerve is asleep. So a little bit of a background. And if you're interested in what happened to him, you can check out some previous episodes or feel free to PM me privately. Um, but you know, what I've taken on in that, in, in that information is urgency is a bit of like unconscious panic of, oh my God, we're under this like two, two month time frame for him to heal and for him, us to hear, see any evidence of waking up his nerve. And he hasn't seen any evidence for seven months. So why now in the next two months, we're, how do we like escalate this? And it feels like a lot of pressure to me, to Christian, and especially to Riley. And I keep reminding myself, like, this is one perspective. He doesn't know the linear timeline. There's justification to it, but is that really true? And what occurred to me in my practice is when I'm quiet, I am trying to go to the spiritual realm and ask my guides and his guides and helping to imagine his nerve literally visualizing it waking up. And so I've been really putting that responsibility on myself to use alchemy, to use my spiritual healing and tools to direct the healing. And what occurred to me this morning in my meditation is I can't direct spirit. It's not my job to direct the healing. Like healing can happen, but whatever you believe in, the intelligent source is more intelligent than my ego, more intelligent than my mind to know where to go and what to heal. And it's that surrender of being really present. That truth came forth to me this morning and it took the pressure off. It doesn't mean I'm not participating in his healing, but I'm not taking the responsibility that I have to be the healer. And I think there's some like there's something in there for the state of the nation and the healing of America that we all have to play our part. And there's something, what is that simpler truth that can come forth, that can guide how we get to our role as making it a better place to be than what it is now? What truth do we really see for ourselves? That takes discretion, nuance, deep listening, and incredible presence so that we can clear the space to hear what that answer is for each one of us. Yeah, and there's there's a lot there. And I, I think, first of all, just to channel all people listening, uh, we're thinking of you and Riley, and, and I think we all believe it's going to be a really healing, prosperous year for him and your family, and, and, and we, we got you. Um, but I think one thing that you've teed up there that would be another great theme for all of us together to explore this year is the idea of surrender and what that means and what's our role. And it's a word that sometimes gives me the heebie jeebies because it's like, wait, I'm, am I giving up? And I want to go back a little bit to, you know, what you said, Jen is I can't direct spirit. And I think there's another deeper thought in there that you're implying, which is, and you don't need to right? That, that spirit ultimately is benevolent. It's, it's our essence stripped away from our ego and our, and our human wantings and, and frailties. And it, and it's, it's a force that will find, you know, like, like water down a hill, it'll find the quickest path to good. I think we all believe that I think, or you and I believe that and people in, in our field believe that when we talk about kind of the surrender you know, earlier last year, we did a, um, I think we called it the rafting cast. We did a podcast about the metaphor of the river, which we love. And it, it gets to what I think we're talking about with surrender. If that word gives you a little bit of trouble, it's, it's to, it's to think of 
you know, being in a canoe or being in a kayak or raft, going down the, a, a raging, beautiful river. And, you know, you can steer and you need to at times. You need to paddle at times. You need to steer at times. But the river takes you where the river takes you. And so, so it, it, it's not a passive process. It's an active process where we realize we're not completely in control. And, the, and I think it's a deep, deep topic and might be the topic of the year. So I just want to tee up that I, I have a feeling we're going to come back to this. And I, whether, whether it's in your own life and, and it's dealing with a health issue or Jen, you brought up alcohol or be, just trying to be present or finally making a choice about that relationship that isn't working for you or the job that isn't satisfying or it's about where we take our country it is it is a it's a dynamic where there there's a there's a river that's taking us and so where is that river like slowing down to understand where that river is going but that doesn't mean you throw the paddle away right it doesn't mean that you jump in and leave the raft behind and um and it's not always clear, like, right? It's not always clear, like, do I need to paddle right now? And we don't always have that guide that we have on the raft saying, two paddles front, you know, one paddle back. So we have to be that for ourselves. And so I just want to put that out there because I think, especially with what we saw this week, that the word surrender might conjure images of kind of like, we'll give up and let people take over. And that's that's not what we're saying. We're saying slow down and see so the goodness that is there can guide you into what what's really real as an example what it's i've had a real awakening this week to one one of my core i i would say behaviors and strengths is to always look for common ground like always be the bridge builder i, I was telling jen I remember being in college with groups of, you know, drunk guys, sorry, it happened, and people would get in a fist fight. And I was the guy in the middle getting hit by both of them trying to break it up. Like, I've just always been that way. And I think what I've realized this week is I've done so much of that that I sometimes have neglected the people um, who aren't fighting and are and are already aligned with what I believe. And that doesn't mean that I, I don't care about the people um, who don't align with me, but I think I've really seen like I need to move the cart in the direction of the horse to use another metaphor and that there's more good I can do by bolstering and giving hope and encouragement to the people who, who kind of already are tuned in to the idea of creating a more inclusive world. That's probably near term where I need to spend my time instead of convincing the bigots and the apologists and the racist that there's a better way that will that's still important to me but it's, it's kind of not my next step and i think um there's probably lots of analogies to that i know that's a big topic i just threw out and i've been talking well so let me let me stop there um and just get your opinion on all of that or the idea of surrender and the river and what we mean by it <laughs> there's so much there i know do we have anything to talk about come on <laughs> Oh, uh, well, to be well, honoring of the, the time, podcast. I think there's two points that come to mind. One is first on the analogy of, you know, following the current and we have to paddle. Like we're not, I love that point. Like we're, we're not asking to ditch the pad, paddle when we're saying surrender. We're saying notice the current. We're yeah. saying like, pay attention to where the flow is. Yeah. And part of you know, the, the idea that we're spiritual beings having a human experience suggests that we are co-creators in the destiny that we're flowing towards, that we have an obligation to pay attention. We have an invitation to speak our truth, to really get clear about who we are and what we stand for. And you, you're 50, I'm almost 50. Like, this is becoming, you know, we really need to mention that. Sorry, on the podcast. I'm so sorry. There's more <laughs> wisdom unraveling that we see every week that we get to say, wow, you know, I didn't, I don't need that thought anymore. I actually don't need that habit. And I love what you're sharing with your latest kind of uh, unfolding of, of being a bridge builder and needing to like convince, or we call it a plenty, pull the rope. And pulling the rope is fucking exhausting. 
doesn't work. It's draining to try and convince others to see a different way rather than, um, you know, as our coach Barb just shared with us on Tuesday, I love the question of like, what is your fragrance? If you're a flower, like, what are you emitting? Mm -hmm. And that vibration, like that truth of the essence of who each of us are, then will attract people that value that share in that similar fragrance. And as a result, we get to co-create with spirit, with one another, ideally to build the common ground that we're all seeking, but to make the better world because we're participating. Like it is this dance of on one hand, our op- left hand is open to receive. Our, our feminine side, left hand is receiving. We're surrendering a higher good that maybe we can't see. But our right hand is doing, our right hand is paddling, our right hand is writing, our right hand is the action we're taking to participate in the blend of surrender and action. And that's co-creation. It's how we get to create the highest possibility that you started off the podcast with, that the better world we can see for our country, for our planet. Um, for our families and loved ones and for ourselves. So I'm really, I love that analogy that, you know, flowing the river, surrendering is active. It's not passive. Um, And how we can each find our way through that is, I think one of the the seeds of that is really getting, getting clear about what our truth is. And that's what I hear you, you exploring, Jeff, is, you know, the idea of really being at the center of our ripple and being being that truth and allowing people to choose in as they feel comfortable, as they vibe, as they see with us. And, and that goes for each one of us, right? Um, rather than trying to convince or blame or shame the other party for not getting it. And it's a very different frame. And I'm going to take, I'm continuing to take that away as we are in our dialogue. Like, what is our truth for plenty? Like, what are we really here to do? How do we allow new clients and existing clients and people and leaders we want to see and serve? Like, how do we speak our truth so that they attract to us? rather than trying to compete against what's already out there that may not be a fit at all for us Mm -hmm. any longer. Um, And, you know, how we make bridges and build bridges and find common ground in a different construct where we're not appealing to the saboteur or the loudest voice in the room or the person that's saying, you know, with arms closed, you know, convince me. Like that's not our job anymore. Our job is to get super clear about what is what is our truth for a better world. And I think we're an exploration of what that is. And I hope we'll always be an exploration for what that is. Yeah. So we so we have some stuff to talk about this year. We have, <laughs> we have great um, guests coming up and the and the usual Friday or Tuesday ramble cast from from um, Jen and Jeff that you've grown to uh, depend on. And we're really glad you're here. I think um, rich territory for a world that needs exploring. One thing that you said that I kind of interrupted and chimed in on that I want to get people thinking about too is, um, as I know we need to wrap up, but I just want to put this this point in. You know, sometimes um, shining your own authentic light means not withholding it not mitigating, right? Not biting your tongue. It's not just, it's not just taking, you know, active engagement with the world. It's, it's stopping the, the withdrawing. And I think for a lot of the leaders we, and people we work with, Jen, like that's almost a bigger challenge is like the self-censoring that we do, right? The, the sharing 70% instead of a hundred percent. And you, you talked about Barb and Barb's great because she gives us the advice that we would give our clients. And she said, how can you be bolder? 
And it was so great to hear because we tell our clients, be who you are, you know, be, be that, be concentrated you. And um, that's kind of what occurs to me as I hear you do that. Nice. Yeah. Quote. I love it. It's like not tolerating anymore. You know, it's not dumbing down. It's not holding back. Um, you know, this feels vulnerable to share, but I will just share it. Like in um, one of my meditative journeys, I have a guide that came to me and she's come to me twice. And one time she gave me a diamond uh, medallion that I visually see as a beautiful necklace emanating diamond light in full color spectrum out from within me. And um, about a week ago, during the full moon, a full moon ceremony, um, she came to me again and she gave me a golden egg and it was shining vibrantly and placed it right into the center of the diamond medallion and said, it is time. And I got such goosebumps from that experience. It felt like you know, my higher self was talking to my lower self. And um, today I saw that as the center of our plenty ripple, as the golden egg that needs to shine from inside out. And would say that that invitation is on offer for each one of us, that it is time. It is time to speak up. It is time to rise up. It is time to get super clear about what you stand for, what your truth is, so that we can create a better nation, a united state of America, a better planet, a better way that is possible if we believe it to be true. Mm -hmm. And I love that point that it is not time to concede. It is not time to dumb down or hold back. And we can do it in a kind, compassionate, you know, inclusive way. It doesn't have to be righteous and segregating and um, arrogant or, you know, it can be kind power. And that is, I think, what is on offer for all of us. And hopefully in the coming episodes, you'll gain more encouragement and inspiration to find what your own light looks like feels like and is for you and that's our dedication is to help you find that so that we can create a better world um, for all of us to be a part of well said what a nice way to end i'm would love to tag on with a brief um I guess, kind of infomercial for people who are looking at the week saying, wow, how do I help? Jen and I just did our um, year end review of 2020 going through our financials. And one of the things I think we were both proud of is seeing the history of where we've gotten active from um, where we've put our money where our mouth is. And uh, many of you probably know we have deep roots in the charitable sector and believe in that sector as a force for positive change. So I just wanna list off organizations that we have recurring support to and encourage you to support them. Southern Poverty Law Center, which is probably the leading organization in the world at cataloging and combating the rise of radical uh, right white supremacy Um, deserves your support. The Anti-Defamation League, which is one of the world leaders in combating anti-Semitism, the NAACP and Black Lives Matter, two groups, one rooted in a century of history, one that's emerged in the last decade as groups that are fighting for equity and inclusion, our longtime friends at Invisible Children who carry the fight for equity, or the, not the fight, we don't like that word, who carry the, the hope of inclusion and equity across the world. The ACLU, which uh, we've been a supporter of um, for years and years and years, which um, among other things this past year, as the media has been under attack, has tried to preserve the right of a, of a free and partial media for all people and particularly for Americans. These are organizations that we support monthly. And so if you're looking for a place to, to start, um, you know, $50 to so one of those organizations probably helps. And if you can't do 50, do 10. And if you can't do 10, do a dollar. And if you can't do a dollar, go to their website and see what happens. Um, when you read a little bit more about um, 
what their truth is and see if it resonates with you. So I just want to put that out there as a specific thing that we would offer for people to do. To do. Um, nobody's helpless right now. And Jen and I like to say hope needs help. Uh, what is so great is to be a hope helper. And what is incredible is to know that we all have the ability right where we are to um, improve the world. So that's my little infomercial mm -hmm. at the end. Thank you all so much for tuning in, for taking the time um, out of your day whenever you do listen to this to uh, tune in and support um, Plenty for Everyone. And we look forward to engaging with you um, through this outlet or through our email. We'd love to see you in 2021 at one of our uh, retreats. Lantern in particular. So please go to plentyconsulting.com to learn more. And we're here for you. So um, if you need support or you're looking for inspiration, you're looking for tools to become more conscious in your own leadership, to speak your truth and shine your light, we're here for you. So um, have a beautiful day and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks all.